the new decimal money will be with us on D-Day. Decimal Day. The 15th of February, 1971. Decimal Day in the United Kingdom and in Ireland was on the 15th of February 1971, the day on which each country decimalised its respective currency of pounds, shillings and pence. In the United Kingdom, the British pound was made up of 20 shillings, each of which was made up of 12 pence, a total of 240 pence. With the decimalisation, the pound kept its old value and name, and the only changes were in relation to the subunits. The shilling was abolished and the pound was subdivided into a hundred new pence, abbreviated P, each of which were worth 2.4 old pence, which were abbreviated D. In Ireland, the Irish pound had a similar pound, shillings and pence currency structure and similar changes took place. In 1960, various reports and the success of decimalisation in South Africa prompted the government to set up the Holsbury Committee in 1961, which reported in 1963. The adoption of the changes suggested in the report was announced on the 1st of March 1966. The Decimal Currency Board was created to manage the transition, although the plans were not approved by Parliament until the Decimal Currency Act in May 1969. Under the new system, the pound was retained, but was divided into a hundred new pence, denoted by the symbol P. New coinage was issued alongside the old coins. The 5P and 10P coins were introduced in April 1968, and were the same size, composition and value as the shilling and two shilling coins in circulation with them. In October 1969, the 50p coin was introduced, with the 10 shilling note withdrawn on the 20th of November 1970. This reduced the number of new coins that had to be introduced on decimal day and meant that the public were already familiar with three of the six new coins. Small booklets were made available containing some or all of the new denominations. The old halfpenny was withdrawn from circulation on the 31st of July 1969 and the half crown, which was two shillings and sixpence, followed on the 31st of December to ease the transition. There was a substantial publicity campaign in the weeks before Decimalisation Day, including a song by Max Bygraves called Decimalisation. The BBC broadcast a series of five-minute programmes, Decimal 5, to which The Scaffold contributed some specially written tunes. ITV repeatedly broadcast a short drama called Granny Gets the Point, starring Doris Hare, the actress in On the Buses, where an elderly woman who does not understand the new system is taught to use it by her grandson. At 10am on the 15th of February itself, and again the following week, BBC One broadcasts New Money Day, a merry-go-round schools programme in which puppet maker Peter Furman and his small friend Musket encounter new prices and new coins when they went to the shops. Banks received stocks of the new coins in advance and these were issued to retailers shortly before decimalisation day to enable them to give change immediately after the changeover. Banks were closed from 3.30pm on Wednesday the 10th of February 1971 to 10am on Monday the 15th of February to enable all outstanding checks and credits in the clearing system to be processed and customers account balance to be converted from pound shillings and pence to decimal. In many banks the conversion was done manually as most bank branches were not yet computerised. February had been chosen for decimalisation day because it was the quietest time of the year for banks, shops and transport organisations. Many items were priced in both currencies for some time before and after. Prior to decimal day, the double pricing was displayed with the old value first, then the new value. From decimal day, the order was switched to the new price first, followed by the second price. Exceptions to the 15th of February introduction were British Rail and London Transport, which went decimal one day early, the former urging customers if they chose to use pennies or threepenny pieces to pay them in multiples of sixpence. Bus companies were the exception, going decimal on Sunday the 21st of February. Decimal day itself went smoothly. Criticisms included the small size of the new halfpenny coin and the fact that some traders had taken advantage of the transition to raise prices. Some used new pennies as sixpences in vending machines. After the 15th of February, shops continued to accept payment in old coins, but always issued change in new coins. The old coins were returned to the banks and in this way, the bulk of them were quickly taken out of circulation. 
The new halfpenny, penny and two pence coins were introduced on the 15th of February 1971. Within two weeks of decimal day, the old penny and old threepenny coins had left circulation, and old sixpences were becoming rare. On the 31st of August 1971, the one penny and threepenny were officially withdrawn from circulation, ending the transition period. The government intended that in speech the new units would be called new pence, but the public decided that it was clearer and quicker to pronounce the new coins as P. Shortenings such as tuppence are now rarely heard. The terms such as tanner, the silver sixpence which previously designated amounts of money, are now no longer used. However, some slang terms such as quid and bob survived from pre-decimal times. Amounts denominated as guineas, which is 21 shillings or one pound and five p, are reserved for specialist transactions such as the sale of horses or some auctions. The public information campaign over the preceding two years helped, and the willingness of a young population to embrace a change also helped. In general, elderly people had much more difficulty adapting, and the phrase, how much is that in old money, or even how much is that in real money, became associated with those who struggled with the change. This phrase is now often used to ask for the conversion between metric and imperial weights and measures. If you like these videos and want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.